I couldn't help but think of the way we're talking now through Zoom, video, uh, iPhone, which you don't even have. <laughs> and that just shows how we're in it, basically. We cannot escape it, but we can have a distance. Welcome to Art and Technology. I'm again joined by Victoria Vesna and Jonathan Keats to talk about the future of brain-computer interfaces and the evolution of human thought. I wonder if either of you have any thoughts about how BCI is going to play a role in how we communicate with each other and the world as a whole. BCI can take us places that we have never been before. One for me that is particularly interesting is the space that we can occupy together where our minds are interacting when we are fully interfaced with machine. What would it mean to create objects? What sort of artifacts of the mind come out of that BCI when I am sculpting with my mind? But more interestingly, what sort of objects can we hold that are the artifacts of our minds working together within that platonic space? Victoria, would you collaborate with Jonathan on the project of platonic objects? Absolutely. <laughs> Definitely. I think it would be amazing. This is a young technology. Our brains are millions of years old. It's actually very narrow compared to what we can do, what our minds and how connected we are. The potential is huge, but there's lack of trust in our own abilities. And for artists to take part in that, to create experiences, is a really important role to play right now. And the BCI is a wonderful crutch because it's actually showing how much our minds are capable of doing. What is something that both of you see as one of the biggest discoveries that you wish everyone knew about BCI or your, just your research in general? I initially was trying to put together a proposal for Brain Mapping Visualization Center. One of the moments that was very interesting is when I asked, do the weather patterns influence the way we think? Because with climate change, you can see how mental illness and many different and perturbations are happening to people. So maybe there's something there worth exploring. One of the conversations that I've been having is to do with plant communication. Plants communicate through sending messages to itself. But what happens as a result, a lot of other plants also are able to respond. Results in a collective self-organization that can result in some sort of intelligent response that may be better than any node could possibly achieve on its own. That to me is really interesting, and I think that we can learn from it, whether it means that we develop new technologies on that basis or whether we simply stand back in awe. I think that both of those are really worth doing. I really appreciate you both uh, taking the time to talk today. Thank you. Same here, thank you so much. Hyundai Motor, connecting art and technology.